Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Bullock, and I'm here to discuss the CWNE and CWISE journey. I am CWNE number 471 and CWISE number 8. Um, and number 8 is the first CWISE member to get that certification outside of the CWNP board member. So I'm quite honored to have that certification. Um, a little bit about my, about my background is uh, I've been a network engineer for 30 years, and even though I haven't had that official title, I feel like once we're, we were a network engineer, we're always a network engineer. Um, I went through uh, being an IT manager for about 12 years, and currently I'm an engineering director at RG Nets. Um, I have extensive wired network experience, multiple switches, pretty much every vendor, every firewall vendor, every router vendor. I have multiple Wi-Fi deployments. I can't say that any one of them before I achieved the CWNE or even started this journey was a good Wi-Fi deployment. I'll talk about that later. And I'm also widely known as Pilot Mike in the community because I did something crazy and built my own airplane that I fly all over the country. Here's a picture of me in slightly inverted, like they say in Top Gun. Uh, so reasons for pursuing the CWNE. Um, like I said earlier, I didn't really know anything about Wi-Fi. Um, I don't like going the vendor route of Wi-Fi certifications. There's nothing wrong with it, but I like understanding the basics that all vendors have to obey by. And that's what really appealed to me about the CWNP, is it's a vendor agnostic approach to certification that all other vendors have to obey by. We all deal with 802.11. That's what every vendor has to deal with. Um, I also started a new position with RG Nets, and they take a vendor agnostic approach to wired and wireless networking. So it was a great fit. Um, it's a challenge if you go to the CWNP website and look at what it takes to become a CWNE. It's five exams, three essays, one new certification, and a publication requirement. Like if you look at it, it's like being in Nepal and looking at the peak of Mount Everest and saying, how am I ever going to make it up there? And you're not if you have that mentality. So you take one step at a time. You don't worry about the big picture. You worry about the CWNA. You worry about the CWISA. All the little tests, they're all bite-sized and very achievable exams. Um, the plan of attack, what to do. The books are amazing. I love the books. They work well for me. I'm a very book type learner. Um, I don't really learn that well looking at videos. I don't uh, learn that well uh, listening to podcasts. Um, so I read the books and I take notes about everything that I don't know or need to memorize. I can't emphasize this more than I have. Notes are what is really needed to form the outline that you concentrate on before you take the exam. Things you don't know, things you kind of know, put them in notes, put them in your own words. Put references as to the pages in the book that you need to refer to if you don't really know them, so it makes it a quick lookup. Eventually, once you read the notes over and over again, right before you take the exam, you have like one page of things that you just need to cram, push that button, take the exam, and send it and pass that test. Um, the last thing you do is take the practice test. They're not to really get you ready for the exam because they're not the exam. They're kind of close, but they find your weaknesses. Find your weaknesses, study them some more, put them in your notes, study. Um, don't take the practice test first. You're, you're not going to do well. The practice tests are not indicative of the real test. They get you ready for it. Um, like I said, use the practice test to identify the topics you need to revisit. Um, your time is really valuable. Like You could study for these tests for hours and hours and days and days and months and months and never feel like you're ready to take your test. If you feel like you're ready to take the test, take it. If you fail, use that as like a motivator because you're going to be doing really good on parts of that test. It's going to say, hey, you kicked butt on all these different sections, but you didn't do so well here. Study that other section, t schedule the exam, and take it. The worst thing you can do is wait too long and be scared to take the exam to fail again because you know what's going to happen? All that information that you took so long to learn is going to start to fade, and then you have to learn it all over again. Value your time, guys. Um, the essays, if you've worked in like wireless for long enough, these things write themselves. Um, 
I was not that great in wireless. All of my wireless deployments before I pursued this were terrible. And I wrote about that. I wrote how powerful the CWNE route was to understanding why I messed up in my previous deployments. Um, the other important thing is I heard it's very important to keep it to a thousand words or less. The CWMP board members, they're volunteers. Uh, they have other things to do. This is not their primary job. Uh, pre please like value their time also. Um, I was not publicized. Uh, this kind of scared me. Uh, I emailed the CWMP board. They gave me three writing topics, and it was a really fun project. Uh, mine was writing about Raspberry Pis and how to use them to uh, analyze Wi-Fi networks. So don't be afraid of the writing project. Um, it, it was fun, and it's a way that you will eventually get published. So I passed my CWNE. I really enjoyed the books. And I said, why not pursue the CWISC? I had no idea that there were only like seven people before me that achieved this certification. Um, much like Wi-Fi, I had basic understanding of IoT, you know, some Zigbee, some Z-Wave deployments. Um, a lot of what I did was Raspberry Pis uh, with Wi-Fi and controlling door locks, sensors, um, all the things that we probably have in our house. Um, but I really didn't know at the protocol level how the IoT stuff worked. Um, it's kind of difficult to get hands-on experience with IoT devices. LoRa, Sigfox, Pan W, all these things are covered in the book, and you can't just go to eBay or Amazon and buy a lot of these things. Although I heard that LoRa, you can now. Uh, there's a good deep dive on this. Um, so a lot of what you're dealing with is kind of theoretical, but the books are very good at guiding you through everything. Uh, the differences and similarities between the CWNE. Well, if you have a CWNE, it's only three more exams. I passed all three of them in six days, including studying. So they're difficult, but not impossible. It's nothing like the CWAP, which we're all scared of. Uh, no endorsement is needed if you have a CWNE. Your previous endorsement counts. Your uh, certification of a non-CWNP exam counts towards the CWISC. No publication requirement and no essay required. This sounds great, right? Well, the scary thing is an interview, which I really like because you know what? You have to be able to talk about what you do in this profession when you're out talking to people, emailing people, and it was a really great experience. It didn't take that much time. The interview itself, it took a lot of time and preparation. You're given the opportunity to introduce yourself and talk about your background in the interview. You have about five minutes to do so. I highly recommend you doing this because it gives a good introduction and makes you feel comfortable with talking to this basically anonymous board of people. Um, you're asked five questions. Don't sweat the details. At least that was my experience. It's very broad topics like you and I would have talking in a discussion about your level of comfort with the IoT environment. Um, and just do it. Like, don't wait, come up with a plan of attack that works for you. I describe what works for me. But like, once you figure it out, just keep on chugging at it. Uh, attack it every day. What makes you stale is not working at this every day, not reading the books every day, not studying every day. Um, if you have a CWNE, don't stop there. Get your CWISC. Three tests, one interview. It is literally that easy. And also, this is not the end of your learning. You know, keep on learning, keep on playing, keep on fiddling. Like, you can't get stagnant in this industry. You become a dinosaur. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking here at CWNP.